All right. So I'm very excited about what we're going to be talking about this morning. Uh, Sarah's actually making me laugh the other day. She was scrolling through my sermons, and I guess I start them all the same way where I say, okay, I'm excited. <laughs> And so I told myself this morning, I'm not going to do that. And what did I do? I started it just like that. So it's got me kind of chuckling a little bit. But we're going to be going over for the next few weeks about some of the key principles that are our core values as a church. And I'm very excited about this because I really feel this is going to be such a blessing to you guys to say, especially if people are asking uh, <clears throat> about your church. What do you guys believe? You can say these different things. And I think that's going to be wonderful for you to share with people. And so what we're talking about today is the healing principle. And so let's go ahead and start with a word of prayer and then we'll dive right in. Again, Jesus, thank you so much for who you are and just what you're always doing in our lives. And uh, Father, I just pray that you would bless this message, you would bless everyone here, everyone who wasn't able to come this morning, and just that you would just be with everyone around us. And I pray that what you would want me to say would come out. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so healing. So uh, it says in the Assembly's core doctrines, which we have 16 of those. If you have not been to our website, they are on there. So you can actually check out what all of those actual core values are. But one of those is healing. And it says divine healing is an integral part of the gospel. Deliverance from sickness is provided for in the atonement and is the privilege of all believers. So is it an integral part of the gospel? Yes, it is. <laughs> you, if you look at the gospels, especially those of you who have been reading uh, through the New Testament, you'll notice healing is everywhere. Everywhere you look, you're going to find healing. And uh, if we go, if you have your Bibles, we're going to be in the book of Luke a lot, but we're going to start in Matthew chapter 8, verse 16, and then we're going to go through 17. And I want you to notice what it says here. Uh, do you have that, Matthew? Almost, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it says, when evening came, again, Matthew 8, 16, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word, and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. So it's clear Jesus heals. That's what he does. <laughs> now, the thing that I think many people struggle with is we are also called to pray over people and for them to receive healing. That's, that is every believer has that opportunity to go up to someone and pray over them and believe that God is going to do something great. And again, this is in the Bible. So if you have your Bibles again, Luke chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. So Jesus, to give you some background, he had been healing people. He's going around doing his thing, healing people all over the place. And then all of a sudden, he talks to his disciples. And notice what he says to them starting in verse 1. When Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim, to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Now you might be thinking, okay, did they do it? Yeah, they did. <laughs> the Bible actually shows us that they went out in twos and they went around and actually uh, were praying over people and they would receive their healing. Now, you might be thinking, okay, but they were super close with Jesus. There's still more. <laughs> and so if you go to Luke chapter 10, starting in verse 1, and then we'll skip down to verse 9, but we're going to start in 1. It says, after this, the Lord appointed 72, some manuscripts say 70, others, and sent them two by two ahead of him in every town in place where he was about to go. Verse 9. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. And if you keep reading, you will find that's exactly what happens. <laughs> so healing is something that is expected if you are a follower of Jesus or miracles are expected. It's going to naturally be a part of your faith walk. And you might be thinking, I don't know about that. that. That seems like a lot. Maybe that's because it was back then. 
No, no, no. <laughs> That's not how it works. Um, uh, and the reason I say that, you still see miracles happening every single day. And the first miracle is your miracle of being saved. Right? I mean, you can see the transformation that's happening in you. You're different. And because of that, it's a wonderful thing, right? You just feel that joy, that experience you have from Jesus. Now, um, I want to kind of walk through how healing happens, though. Because there's a key thing that has to happen, and it's our faith. Everyone say faith. faith. Absolutely. You got to have faith. If you don't, and faith, if you don't know what that means, it means belief. If you don't have belief that Jesus is going to do something great, then he's not. <laughs> That's just how it works. <laughs> so I want you, if you again got your Bibles, we're going to be in Matthew 8 now again, starting in verse 1. And I just want you to see this sequence of how healing occurs, because there's, there's two things that occur here. We're going to be going 1 all the way through 10. When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. Man, notice that. If you're willing. I love what Jesus says. Oh, I am. <laughs> absolutely want to take care of this for you. Then Jesus said to him, see that you don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them, which shows that healing was something also expected in the Old Testament side of the Bible. And then notice what happens in the next uh, verse here. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. Now, now notice what Jesus says to him. Shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes and that one come and he comes. And I say to my servant, do this and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, truly, I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. So two very interesting situations there. And with the first one, I want you to notice that there is asking that occurred. He went to Jesus asking, I would like to be healed. And that shows confidence. Hebrews chapter 11 Verse 1 says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Notice that. Faith is confidence in what we hope for. I believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So that means that if he's been healing people in this Bible from the beginning all the way to the end of what's written, then we can expect the same thing in our lives. <laughs> it's going to happen. I think a great example of this um, is my brother. So my dad's here. This is a perfect Sunday for you to be here because there's lots of examples from our family. <laughs> but when my brother was ill when he was a child, he would immediately go up to my dad and ask for prayer every single time. Wouldn't he, dad? He'd go up to you every single time. And he would be well. It didn't matter what sickness he had within a few hours. I mean, he would be, it would be gone instantly like that. He would be healed because of the faith that he had that Jesus could heal him. Uh, this is why I think in Matthew 18, 3, it says, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So why should we be like little children? Because children have great faith. Amen. They believe what you tell them. Right? They do. They absolutely 100% believe it. There's no doubt in their mind. And because my brother had that kind of faith, he was healed all the time. I remember uh, looking at him one time and he had been vomiting real bad. Remember this dad? He was vomiting all over the place. And he's like, okay, I want you to pray over me. And sure enough, he got prayed over. Then my mom tucked him in into bed. He had this little Bible with him that he slept with. 
And sure enough, he's up running around, eating food, no problem. I mean, I just was like, wow. You know, and so I got to see that and see that example of faith. It was pretty amazing. And then there's that confidence part we talked about. But then there's also the, the part of sometimes you're not even seeking a miracle and God just decides to give it to you anyways, which is really amazing. Again, if you're in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 this time, I want you to notice what it says here. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. My mom, boy, what a testament of faith. She earnestly went after Jesus every day. And um, uh, my mom, she had my brother Ron, my older brother Ron, and then she had a miscarriage uh, of uh, my brother Peter, and she was told she would never be able to have children again. And dad, the, the odds were like way low that it could ever happen, correct? And so she was looking at this picture one day, and it's of uh, my dad and my brother Ron and her, and she looks at it and she says, Lord, if this is the family you want me to have, I will be content with what you've given me. And then all of a sudden, the power of the Holy Spirit came upon her so strong that it knocked her to the floor, and she felt this warmth over her. And uh, she knew that she had been healed of whatever was blocking her in that moment. And two weeks later, she was pregnant with me. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's our God. You know, that's him. That's what he's able to do. And then she was really surprised when she ended up getting pregnant again. You know why? Because she had been healed. So uh, trust me, it's going to follow your life. <laughs> Uh, my great-grandma Macha, who I've talked about many times, I got to see things that followed her in terms of healing, um, then with my own mother, my own dad, and, and I have it in my life. I have stories of different people that I've prayed for, and healing followed. And healing of things you wouldn't expect. So for example, um, it, it's not over a person's body, it was over a car. I, I was, uh, this guy, I, I, and again, there's no accidents with Jesus. <laughs> and so I was at college and uh, I was getting ready to pull out and, and I noticed this man and it looked like he had car trouble. I thought, well, maybe he needs a jump. I've got jumper cables, I can help him with that. And so I go ahead and I get out the, uh, I go over to him like, hey, what's going on? He's like, I have no clue. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm, I don't know either. I'm, I have no knowledge about cars. <laughs> and so I said, well, let's see if it needs a jump. So we put the jumper cables on, nothing's happening. You know, it, it looks really bad. And then I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me. I want you to pray over the vehicle. And I'm like, God, what if it doesn't happen? <laughs> and he goes, I want you to pray over the vehicle in faith. And so I told the guy, it's like, hey, I'm gonna pray over this believing that your car is gonna start. I just want you to know that before I start praying here. And so he's like, okay, I'm like, well, I want you to turn it and I'm gonna pray. And so I start praying as he turns it. Sure enough, it came roaring to life. <laughs> and so I was like, wow, you know what I mean? Like that, that is God in that moment. And at that point we had given up on the jumper cables. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was truly just praying and expecting that God was going to do something. And again, this is gonna follow your life. You're gonna have miracles that are gonna happen, without a doubt. Uh, I have a friend of mine, I don't know if I've mentioned this yet, but he sent me a text, you're magic. I'm like, oh magic? What do you mean I'm magic? And he goes, you said you would pray that I would find a job. I didn't expect I'd find a job this fast. And I said, well, that's not me, that's Jesus. <laughs> that wasn't me doing anything, but in faith, I really believe that if I pray for someone, God's going to do something. And, and sure enough, he got that job and he's very content with what he's doing. And it's just interesting how God, if you have faith, just starts going in motion. It's awesome. Now, there's many times though, where our healing may not come the way that we expect it to. <laughs> you know, this is so interesting about Jesus. He heals in ways in the New Testament that in, in my sense would mean to me, well, God, that doesn't make sense. 
Why are you doing it that way? But I think he does that purposefully to show us he has a very different way of sometimes of healing. Are you going to be healed instantly sometimes? Yeah, yeah, you will. Will there be other times where it's going to take time? Yeah, it will. I think that's so important when we talk about healing because a very dangerous thing to believe is that if you're not being healed, there's something wrong with you. No, 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 no. My mom suffered with terrible pain most of her life. Seeked healing for that most of her life. And was one of the strongest witnesses I saw for Jesus. So just because she didn't get it doesn't mean that that healing didn't come. It came now. She's with the Lord. The complete healing will, will happen. One way or another, it's going to happen. Now, um, to show you how things are so different, though, I want you uh, in your Bibles to go to Luke chapter 18. So Luke chapter 18, and we're going to be starting in verse 35, in which with each of these examples, I want you to see what Jesus does here. Okay, so Luke 18, 35. Thank you, Matthew. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening, and they told him, Jesus of Nazareth is, is, Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see. Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they also praised God. Notice the situation. He had to seek after Jesus. If you want something, you got to ask. Honest, if you really want to see something happen, it's important to ask. Now, could it be like my mom where that ends up happening? Yeah, but the Lord also knew the desire for heart to have more children. And the Bible talks about that, that if you put him first, all these other things will be added unto you. But notice this man, he cries out once. I'm sure Jesus heard the cry the first time. And then he waits and hears it again. Isn't that interesting? So repeated crying out is what happens here. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find it. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. I, I wonder, did he do this on purpose just to spell out the word ask? Think about that. The A is ask. The S is seek. And the K is knock. Did he do that on purpose? You know, <laughs> I, th I noticed something like that. I'm like, what an interesting way for you to remember that if that's what he was doing. But again, if you do that, notice what it says here in verse 8. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. And again, it just may not be the way you're expecting it to be opened. Or you may ask for something, and the Lord sees your greater need and helps you with that instead. It's very important to understand that, that if you don't receive the initial healing that you're expecting, there's probably a reason. And it's a great reason. That's very important too. You may be thinking, ah, but it doesn't seem great to me. True, it may not. But uh, we're going to get to that too. I'm kind of getting a little bit ahead of myself here. Okay, but I want you to notice verse 9 too about God's character here in Matthew 7. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? Ooh, what a parallel. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will, you, will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So asking for a healing is step number one. If you really want a healing from the Lord, make sure that you ask for it. Now, Again, just to show how Jesus does things really differently, I want you to go to Matthew 15, verse 21. And this time we're uh, coming up with a Canaanite woman, woman. And what's interesting is the faith that we've seen, the greatest examples in the Bible, sometimes are from Gentiles, people who weren't even Jews. They didn't even have that background of God like the Jews did. And yet they had this really great faith. 
Notice what it says here in Matthew 20, 15, verse, starting in verse 21. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of uh, Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David. And notice they acknowledge his kingship, son of David. That, that clearly identifies him as the Messiah. Have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. Nothing is said. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. So clearly they're annoyed, right? He answered, I was sent only to the lost uh, sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me. He replied, it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. He's basically calling her a dog. Jesus. <laughs> uh, now, how many of you, if someone were to call you a dog like that, you'd be like, I'm out of here. No way. I have now been insulted. I have every right to look down upon you. You have insulted me. But that's not the purpose here. Jesus is testing, will she keep coming back? Notice what happens next. She, she even acknowledges the insult. Yes, it is, Lord. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Notice that, I'm not leaving until I get an answer. That was her, that was her attitude. Even though Jesus basically calls her a dog. <laughs> What does, he end up, what does she end up doing? She receives the healing that she sought after because she kept going and didn't just give up. What a great example for us. You keep going until you get that healing that you're seeking from the Lord. Um, another thing that Jesus does that, <laughs> this just doesn't make sense to me, but he does it. This comes from John chapter nine, starting in verse six. <laughs> Sorry, this is so interesting. Okay, after saying this, he spit on the ground, all right? Made some mud with, from the saliva, and then he put it on, this, on the man's eyes. There's a man that wants to be healed of his blindness. Verse seven, go, he told him, and wash in the pool of uh, Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. Oh my goodness. All these other people, Jesus has healed them just by walking up to them, places his hands on them, or just says, okay, be healed. No, no, no. This man, he spits on the ground, <laughs> makes mud, and puts it in the person's eyes, and then says, now, I want you to go, and I want you to go over to this pool and wash yourself in it. Why? Because he wanted to see if he'd be obedient. Obedience also leads to healing. John chapter 14, verse 15 says, if you love me, keep my commands. Or if you love me, you'll obey me. And so that is also a crucial part to this. And my question to so many of you in the room, myself included, because guys, whenever I preach, I'm also preaching myself. <laughs> Please know that. <laughs> How many healings or touches from the Lord are we possibly missing out on just because we're not being obedient? That's a big question, big, big question. But notice he is obedient, and because of it, he comes home seen. Now, this one is probably the most interesting one. Yikes. Okay, so this one's Mark chapter 8, verse 22. <laughs> oh, man. They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him doesn't touch him. <laughs> he took the blind man by the hand. Well, I guess he does here. He takes him by the hand, leads him outside of the village. So he takes him away from everyone. And, when he, and then he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him. And Jesus asked, do you see anything? He spits in his eyes. <laughs> I mean, this just doesn't make sense, right? I mean, you think about all these things. Why would Jesus do this? There's always reasons. Notice what it shows here. He looked up and said, I see people, they look like trees walking around. He isn't fully healed yet. He started the healing process. Oh, that's key. Please hold on to that today. 
He started the healing process and then there was something else that had to happen afterwards. That's so key. So many times we expect the healing to be just instamatic, but yet we don't realize that the healing has already started and then it just keeps going. That's so important. Okay, notice what happens here in verse 25. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home saying, don't even go into the village. He didn't want to acknowledge, hey, you don't have to shout it out about me, what just happened, just know you received your healing. But at the same time, uh, Jesus was doing this to be humble and showing he wasn't bragging, if that makes sense. Because you might be sitting there thinking, well, then why do we talk about people being healed? <laughs> we do that to build up each other's faith. That, that's the purpose of this. The stories that I shared with you of things that I've seen happen, that encourages you hopefully to know, well, okay, so it happened for Tim, then it can happen for me. Uh, and to give you a great example of this, those of you who know me know I've shared this story before. I, I have made some foolish decisions in my life. <laughs> One of these was, I was on my way to college and forgot to check how much gas I had in the car. Oh my goodness, I'm, I'm about halfway and I look and I'm like, oh, I don't have enough gas. How am I going to get home? And so I was very nervous because I thought, there's no way I'm going to make it. I mean, I'm less than a quarter of a tank of gas going all the way from Rensselaer up to Calumet and Hammond, there, or Purdue Calumet and Hammond. Like, there's no way I'm gonna make this happen. And so, in faith, I started to go ahead and pray, God, I know you can make a way. I know you can find a way to stretch this gas. I'm sorry, I was so uh, foolish. <laughs> I was gonna say something else there. <laughs> but I was not making a good decision. And so, I, I kept praying. And I got to college, did my class, and then on the way home prayed, and sure enough, I got home, all on that little tank of gas. Now, the reason I share this, I had a youth group member that was with me that heard me share that testimony, and then he was in a similar situation, and what did he do? He prayed, oh God, I don't have any money with me. <laughs> I've gotta find a way to get home. And sure enough, he too got home. There's that faith part, right? And that's why we share these faith examples with you. So hopefully it will encourage you uh, not to make foolish decisions, number one, but also to make sure you know that God can be with you in something as simple as a tank of gas. He can be in that situation. Okay. Um, but what if the delay's happening and it's been years? That is gonna happen sometimes too. That's very important. Uh, we're going to be in Mark chapter 9, uh, verse 20. Uh, and, and this is so important. Please know that if, if you're not being healed of whatever it is that you're seeking, again, Jesus still sees you. And like I've already shared, there might just be a different way that healing is going to come about. So notice what happens here. Starting in uh, Mark 9, verse 20. And what happens, there's this uh, little boy that's demon-possessed. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you do anything, take pity on us and help us. Now, Notice that that's definitely demon influence. Uh, demons typically do this. You can go through the Old and New Testament. They will try to get you to inflict harm on yourself. It, it, it's all over the Bible, where if there's demonic influence, they will try to have some sort of self-harm. So if you go to the prophets of Baal, they did that. They would cut themselves trying to worship, thinking it was going to bring about their God's way of doing, thing, doing things. And then you see this little boy he's being th thrown into a fire, uh, or he's being put into water to try and uh, have some sort of destruction happen to him. So you see that back and forth all through the word. So uh, be praying just that those influences be rebuked. Uh, but notice what happens here again. I love this part uh, where it says, but if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Look at verse 23, if you can. <laughs> 
<laughs> Notice how Jesus says that. I love that. Jesus said, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. How many of you feel that way? I know I do. <laughs> There's so many situations where I'm like, okay, I know that you're the same God that caused the Red Sea to, uh, to part. I know you're the same God who brings the dead back to life. Yet for some reason, I'm still doubting in this situation. And here's why. I, I'm sure many of you feel the same way. You don't feel worthy of it, right? You know what I'm talking about. You're like, but look how bad I do things. It's not how it is with God. I, I can have all the faith in the world for somebody else. I really can. But for myself, because I see my sin still, I've got to look past that and realize, remind yourself of the promises that you have in here. You're a child of the living God, right? And so, and, and like we said earlier, he wants to give you those good gifts. Verse 25. Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene. He rebuked the impure spirit. You, do, you deaf and mute spirit, he said. I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him uh, violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? Ooh, now notice that. The 12 disciples who have been with Jesus all this time, they've gone in sets of twos, going out, praying over people, seeing people get healed, seeing demons be driven out. And then you also have the 72. They were doing the same thing. So why was this one different? Notice what, it said, what Jesus says here. He replied, this kind can only come out by prayer and some manuscripts also say prayer and fasting. And then notice what it says in the same situation in Matthew 17, 20. This is so key, so key. He replied, because you have so little faith. Did you catch that? That's a big catch. So the first one is prayer and fasting is key. The second part here, it's because the faith needs to get built up to see the miracle that's going to happen. Truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And I believe that. I do, I, I absolutely believe that with my whole heart. If God says it in here, I believe it. Nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing will be impossible for you. So please know today, <clears throat> when it comes to healing, that there's all kinds of different ways it can happen, right? It can be immediate, which is awesome. It could be something that is delayed just a little bit, which is fine too. It might take different steps. And I do believe some of those steps include medical practices. I do, I feel that so much. I've uh, unfortunately heard of many different people who are like, oh, I'm not going to a doctor. No, no, no. But that this will help you with this instantly. No, no, I'm not doing it. Please be prayerful because I've seen people die. Does that make sense? I mean, that, that's very important. So uh, there was a man, uh, there was a pastor here several months ago sharing this, that there was a man that he refused to go to the doctor for something that could have easily been helped and he didn't and ended up passing away. I mean, you have to also, the Bible is very clear, use wisdom in everything that you're also doing, right? Does that make sense? Nothing wrong with also trying to seek out medical help for we know things that God has helped us to now see. Nothing wrong with that. Now, um, take a look at this too, when you are going through this, because if you are going through a delayed healing, I believe it's for your character development. I do. If you go to James chapter one, Verse two, and I'm ending with this. Sorry, I know this sermon was a little bit longer, uh, but this, there's just so much to talk about. <laughs> but in James 1, 2, and um, we're gonna go all the way through verse seven. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, and those trials can be uh, uh, medical-based trials with your body, physical things. Because you know that the testing of notice your faith 
produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, meaning let whatever this is run its course so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, key, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. What does that mean? It just keeps going back and forth. It doesn't really make any progress, right? It just keeps moving. Verse 7, that person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all that they do. This is so important again. There's always a reason for every season that we're in. Again, I look at my mom and oh, the pain that she was in. I mean, dad, it was all over her, right? You had TMJ in the jaw, I remember that first, a bad heart, fibromyalgia, knees that went down to the bone, Right? I mean, she had one thing after another health-wise that she struggled with. Yet, there was a bad history of cancer in her side of the family. She didn't die from that. Most of the family dad, what, 55 and younger is how long they lived except for Grandma Macha because her mom died young and then there was another mother that died young, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Not everybody in her family died. Yes. So, you, so there were some that died young, some that didn't, but my mom, she made it well past what, uh, she made it well past some of the earlier marks of other people in the family, which is a big deal. So it's amazing that even though she had those things happening, what did it do in her? She never lost her faith. And it created in her this great understanding of people's pain. When my mom was like hearing people talk about the pain they're in, she never doubted it because she was constantly living it. Is that making sense? And so watching my mom go through that, when people share with me, I have all this pain going on, I don't doubt them. I don't. If they're lying, then that's on them. I'm just gonna choose to believe because I remember how my mom felt when people wouldn't believe her. It was so hurtful to her. Is that making sense? So I think that's also important here too. James 5, 14 and 15 said, says, is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. How and what timing? We don't know, but it's coming. The Lord will raise them up, and if they have sinned, they will be forgiven. And that is something that, uh, oh, uh, Amanda, could you go get Sarah? At this point, she wanted to come back for this part of the service. And that's what we're going to do this morning um, when we're done here with the service. Those of you who would like prayer for anything, doesn't matter what it is, we're going to gather around you and we're going to pray whatever that might be. And so for those of you that we know that you're busy and you've got schedules of things that you know that you want to go do, that's perfectly fine. Please know that. <laughs> so in no way is there going to be judgment. Oh, they're walking out. No, no, no. <laughs> that's perfectly fine. But for people who are seeking some sort of healing this morning, we're going to pray over you. And so we're going to believe in faith that God's going to do something. And when you come up, just like the songs we sang earlier, just let Jesus change your life. Come with that belief that he can do it.